Good morning, everybody. I thought that today I would take you guys around and show you all the different animals that we have here on the homestead. When we talk about doing chores, you're probably wondering, well, what kind of chores are you doing? You guys have seen the uh, dairy cow Daisy and the pigs. So we're going to go ahead and take you around and show you all the other animals that we have on the farm. Okay, so I figured that we would start with the cows. So for here, we have five of our beef cows over here. This is Grizzly, she's a black Angus. And then we also have Oakley here. Um, he is our bull. We raised him since he was a baby. Um, he was actually born in February of last year. Um, next to him is Darla. She is actually Daisy's daughter and she was born in August, this past August. And then we also have this guy, the beefy boy. He is um, a Angus Cross as well. He is actually being raised to be sent to freezer camp in the fall. Um, we also do have another red Angus. She's actually up closer by the water trough, so we can't see her right now. But our main purpose for raising beef cows is for a family to um, send usually in the fall to be butchered and then we'll have beef for the year for us. Hi guys. We're still unsure if we are going to keep the bull as a bull or um, if we are going to send him to butcher um, or use him as a breeding bull as well. He has really good looks and everything. We really like him. Again, he was born here on the farm. Same with the Red Angus Luna. She was also born the day before um, this guy was, Oakley. Okay, so next we are going to be going into our goat barn. And as we get up here, Luna, oh, my solar lights up. Luna, the red Angus, says, hi, what are you doing? You're so silly. Has come around from the barn, so we'll go say hi to her. Hi, Luna. Hi, girl. <laughs> She's too cute. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and go turn on the lights for the goats. All right, so welcome to the goat barn. Uh, we built this goat barn last year. Um, in this barn, we have five stalls. In the main barn, we do have one stall that we are using for three of our goats just because of some drainage issues in the um, back stall. So I'm gonna go ahead and introduce you to all the goats. Okay, so this is Sophia. We have had her for a few years. Um, Sophia is our trusty doe. She has been, this is her third time that she's been bred here on the farm. And she, no matter what, has always given us twins so this may be her last year um breeding here only because she is getting older so all right let's move on to the next <laughs> all right so next we have blair blair is a couple years old i believe now and this is going to be her first kidding season She's probably going to be due in a couple months. Her dad is a boar and her mom was a Nubian. Hi, Blair. <laughs> All right, so coming over here, we have two. So this is Peanut. We've also had her for a few years as well. We only bred her one time, and I just feel that she's a little bit too small, so we have not. Here's this one. This is actually Sophia's daughter, um, and she's just a year um, she actually doesn't have a name. I just call her Hey Girl, and it kind of works out. So there is Peanut and Hey Girl. <laughs> All right, so this one is 
Ferdy. Hi, Vern. Hi. So she is actually going to be due here within the next couple of weeks, I believe. Um, she did have um, kids last year, but unfortunately they were stillborn. So that was a bummer. And then this is her sister. As you can see, so big. What are you doing, Shirley? Oh, hi, Shirley. Hi, you coming to say hi? So Shirley also had a massive baby last year. Unfortunately, did not make it. So we are kind of hoping for a better kidding year this year with these two. Um, the dad is the boar that was actually in the other barn that I'll show you in a little bit. But yeah, she, you got, look at how wide she is. Whoo! Big girl. All right, so then in the back stall here, we have Mr. Handsome over here. He is also Sophia's son. He's the twin of the Hey Girl. And this is Oliver. Oliver is our new buck. Hi, Oliver. <laughs> Hi, Allie. All right, guys, so these are the goats in this barn. We'll go ahead and go to the main barn, and I'll show you the animals that we have in there. All right guys, so we have made it to the main barn and I'll go ahead and I'm gonna show you the three goats that we have up here. <laughs> Hi guys. So this is um, Hugh. He is our current buck right now. Hi Hugh. And these are, oh. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> All right, and then these are the other two girls. We call them the mean girls. They don't really like too many people, but they are also bred and due in June. So that is it for the goats that we have. And the main purpose that we do with the goats is we raise their kids and then we end up selling their kids as well. This year may be a little bit different. We are trying to figure out if we want to actually raise the babies this year and then sell them when they are about one or two, or if we just want to raise them as bottle babies and then that way we can sell them before we have, you know, before the year comes. Um, so we have a few decisions to make on that, but we'll figure that out when it gets there. So the next one that we are going to stop and see are the chickens. Hi, girls. And this is our lavender rooster. We have. 15 chickens all together, one rooster. Um, we have three Rhode Island Reds, and then we have the brown Brahmas, and then the white Brahmas. Oh, someone's sneaking out. <laughs> all right, so there are our chickens. Right now, we do have six um, chicks that we are raising down in our basement right now. They do need a heat lamp still because it is still chilly at night, as you can probably see my breath this morning. Um, so we do have them still under the heat lamp. And then we also have 18 meat birds. Um, those ones are also downstairs. This weekend, we're kind of hoping we can be able to put these girls out on their uh, summer pasture. We have um, like an enclosed coop for them. And then we are planning on cleaning this out good and then putting the meepers in there for the summer to raise them out really. So they are very dirty, stinky birds, um, but they are quick to raise, to send to freezer camp, to get back, to put meat in our freezer. So this coop is nice because we actually have a laminate flooring. So all the poop and manure, everything that gets put on the ground into the, or on the floor, um, on the shavings is a super easy, easy clean out. So I think with having the meat birds in there this year, just for the rest of their seven, six, seven weeks that they have left is going to be a lot quicker, a lot cleaner, hopefully not as stinky, and get them raised out and get them set to go. Um, I also do have um, an incubator that I have going out or inside right now as well. I put 12 or 14 eggs in them, and two ended up being fertile, um, which is kind of a bummer, especially taking 21 days to only possibly get two chicks 
um, out of it. Last night, one chick did hatch, and I'll go ahead and put a cute picture here for you for that. Um, there's one egg that still has not hatched yet. When I did candle it, it did look like that there was something in it. Um, but now, um, since I had taken the um, the rollers out of the um, incubator, I candled it quick, and it didn't look as um, full as the first one did. Like the first one was like completely black. This one was about half. So I don't know if maybe potentially it stopped growing in there. I'm not quite sure. So we are going to give it another day to see if it, you know, ends up hatching. So, um, next up we have the pigs. I'm sure that you guys have seen in the other videos. Um, we have two sows that had piglets last month. Um, one sow had 12, but one did pass away. So we have 11 there. The other mom had um, piglets two weeks later, shy of one day, um, and she had 10. So they are getting so big. So I'll go ahead and show you them. All right, so there's mama pig. Piglets are already starting to eat some grain, which is good. Hi, honeys. Oh, we got some pig wrestling going on over here. Hi, mom. Hi. So as you can see, you're probably counting and there's a lot more piglets over here than the other side. The reasoning for that is we have this gate that is here in the center and I'll turn you back around to show you. Um, but we had leftover uh, cattle panels that we put on the bottom because there is a good size gap that the piglets can go on either side. So we use the leftover cattle panel that we have, but there's probably about a foot at the edge here that we didn't have um, enough cattle panel to cover. So we tried putting up a board. Um, we tried putting up this heavy duty plastic thing there. No matter what, these piglets were so sneaky. I don't know how they did it, but they always managed to get on the other side with the other mom. Um, so after every day, twice a day, wrangling pigs to put them on the right side, um, the other day I just said, you know what, they're at the age where um, the moms are good with either pig, so we got rid of that board, and they have just been in and out on both sides. Um, the moms don't really seem to bother who's nursing on who, so I'll go ahead and show you this little spot that they keep going, coming in and out of. So as you can see, that's that little spot, and they'll sneak in and out. So... There's the piglets. They have gotten so big. It's actually um, the rooster. It is actually going to be time uh, this weekend to have a pig castrating <laughs> uh, party here. So um, it's going to be my first time doing that. Um, never done it before. I have. I have um, also looked it up and I've seen a lot of people um, on YouTube do it and it seems pretty um, as simple as simple can get, I guess. So I am feeling pretty confident about it. We have everything that we need, so we are going to be um, getting that taken care of this weekend. We do have quite a few people already that um, have already said that they wanted piglets, so that is good. Um, one thing that I did want to mention for the pigs, this is probably going to be the last time, the first and last time that we um, breed pigs. We did think that it would be a good thing to know that we can always have pigs here on the farm, especially to raise to butcher for meat, but um, as the time went on, it's not, it's definitely not ideal for us. It's just not for us and that's okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and still, um, raise a pig every year or a couple pigs every other year to put in the freezer. But as far as breeding and raising, it's just not, it's just not for us right now. It's not financially, um, it's just not financially right for us right now. It does take a long time, especially for these two uh, sows that we've had. We've had them since they were eight weeks old and they are just a year now. So we've had to feed them, um, you know, almost a year um, in order to get piglets. So that's a lot of feed. They do eat a lot. So, and we try not to feed too many table scraps to them to offset that feed. We do feed them like vegetables and fruit and stuff like that if we do have any um, leftovers, but um, usually that's pretty, pretty rare. So what we're just gonna do is we're gonna sell the piglets that we have. 
We are going to end up selling the sows um, or sending them to butcher. We haven't really decided yet. And then um, from there, we're just going to go ahead and get a pig every every year or two and, and just raise it that way. Raise it during the spring and summer and then butcher it in the fall. That way, that's one last thing that we have to worry about in the winter time. It is, it's a lot of work and... You know, in the beginning, the moms are really great, and they still really are great, but um, being in a stall is is really tough, and when you go in a stall and then you come out feeling like you just got out of a wrestling match, um, it's, it's not fun, and that's definitely not what we want here on the farm either. We want everything to be um, as relaxed as can be, as fun as can be, because that's what homesteading and farming should be about, is, is as less stress as possible, and if something brings you stress, then maybe you need to to think of something, um, you know, reevaluate that situation. So that's what we're kind of doing. So I'm going to go ahead and show you Daisy, which you've seen before. She is out here already on the hay. So here's Daisy mount away. All right. And then I believe that is all we have. We do have two ducks. Um, we did have four. Um, but the male ducks ended up killing the two female ducks that we had. So that was super unfortunate. Um, oh, let me go ahead and show you guys the barn so you can kind of see what I'm saying when I back it up here. So this is our main barn. This is where the pigs and the chickens and the one stall of goats is. We have our hay barn over here. This is also another hay storage. We do um, mainly round bales, so as you can imagine, they're big, so we have to have a lot of storage for them. This is the small goat barn that we have. And then down there is the cows. And then, so this is our long driveway. Um, that's the road. And then as you can see for reference, this is where Daisy um, is and our two horses. So that's where we're headed now. I wanted to go ahead and show you guys the two horses that we have. Um, we do ride Western. We used to ride a ton, but you know, they said, be a homeowner, it'd be a lot of fun. Um, very time consuming. So many projects. We've been at our house for, this is actually going on our fourth year. Um, and you know, we just have project after project going on and it has unfortunately taking, um, riding on the back on the back burner right now which is okay these horses are not minding it at all they would definitely much rather be in the pasture eating living their best lives so let me go ahead and i will show you them Hey boys. So this is Shadow. He is my buckskin. Hi honey. He is probably in his early 20s. I've had him since he was 15. So we've had him for a few years. He's been such a good boy. We've had so many hours and summers of riding. He has definitely done done well for us all right and this one over here is sunny he is actually in his mid to late 20s my this is my husband's horse hi sunny we have also had him for longer than we have had shadow and he too has been such an awesome horse for my husband All right, so those are our horses. So I'm pretty sure that's all the animals that we have covered. I'm trying to think, once there gets so many, it's so many, but um, I'll kind of give you another reference of where we are. So there's the house. We have a very long like strip here, like a roadway to the house and to the barn as well. Um, 
And this pasture goes all the way to our, that tree line back there. Um, that's all of our property. And then it goes way, way up. We have about a little over 20 acres. I believe it's 23. Um, and this is also where we keep our goats in the summertime. So we have four pastures here. And there's the dogs. We have a pond out back here. And that's probably where they're headed. Come on, dogs. Come on. They love the pond, but I think it's way too cold. All right, so we have one, four uh, paddocks back here for the goats. Um, this is the biggest one, I believe. Uh, maybe the second biggest, but this is completely different from what it was. This, as you can see, there's a ton of woods, and that's how this whole place used to be back here until we had taken down a bunch of trees and uh, put the goats on here and with the goat manure the grass is just so thick and rich so it's been amazing so um, this is the one pasture I'm not gonna lie guys I have not been back here at all yet this this spring come on dogs I'll go ahead and show you the pond too this is also where I have my garden and I have like I said I have not been back here and well, this garden is gonna need, definitely needs some work. So, come on dogs. So this is our second um, paddock for the goats. And then we have our third one here and then one in the back back here. So while I'm here, I'll, I'm gonna show you the garden. So, um, I did have, as you can see, um, some of that weed fabric and guys that works amazing and I we had this in ground garden um, we had somebody come in till up and it worked pretty good and I was like I'm gonna keep up on these weeds it was a disaster like I could not believe how invasive these weeds were out here even though we had somebody come and till it up and everything um, it was just out of control. So my first year having an in-ground garden was a complete mess. Um, and with that, the vegetables kind of, um, were taken over by the weeds. So it was, it was definitely a learning experience. So I actually, come on dogs, come on. So I actually watch, uh, Living Traditions Homestead, which is also on YouTube. And they have this woven weed fabric that they put down and I'm like you know what? I'll go ahead and give it a try it was it was kind of inexpensive for um, what you get but if it was double the price I would have gotten it because this was a life changer like we put it down and if I have pictures of uh, my garden last year I'll go ahead and put some pictures in here but um it was amazing absolutely amazing like at zero weeds the the vegetables did so good so good so this is my um, little patio area that my husband had built me our first year um, here it has two raised beds on each side with a little patio area we put string lights here um, this thing did very well for me in my first my very first year gardening here um, and it's hard to believe in just these two raised beds how much vegetables that I put in here I did the square foot gardening method and I packed a lot of vegetables in here and it again did fabulous. Um, the only thing that didn't do so well was the potatoes, but I think because the uh, soil was a little bit too compacted for them in here. Um, but yeah, you guys, I'm really excited for the gardening season this year. So getting off track from the animals, but that's okay. Um, I will be taking you guys along for the garden when the time comes. Um, as I had mentioned with the chickens, this is our chicken um, thing that we have for them. We have two cute lights on each end. Um, so they'll be going out here shortly. We kind of keep our equipment and stuff back here for, for winter storage. Um, my husband built this and he did such a good job. Um, the only downfall that him and I have figured is that it is super heavy. So it's not like we can uh, pull it. We have to use our tractor. And that's okay as well. Um, 
usually every other day, every third day, we'll bring the tractor out and move the chickens around um, on the grass. So, all right, come on dogs. So these are also our dogs. We have two black labs here. The smaller one is Lindy, and then this is Jed. And then we also have our chocolate lab, Zeus. So they definitely, they love it back here in the summertime. Um, like I said, we have the pond. Actually, we can walk back in. I'll show you the pond. We actually had cleared out a section because our main goal is we're putting a, a porch on the back of the house as well. And we want to be able to sit in the back of the house and see our pond. Um, so we did have a small clearing down towards our pond to be able to see it from the house. Um, we also do have a roadway that goes back in our woods, so I'll show you that. So this is our roadway that goes way back to our woods. The dogs also love it back here. My husband takes them on a little trail walk. All right, so this pond has some work. Actually, this is probably the best area to get into. We'd like to get some fish because in the summertime we have a lot of, um, oh Lindy, come on. Oh boy. Um, a lot of that green grass stuff that comes up. So we'd like to try to get something in here, whether we put the, we are putting the ducks in here, um, but I'd like to put something in here um, to kind of keep it down so it looks a little bigger because with the grass that comes up in here, definitely makes the pond look much smaller but we did have Amish come in here not too long ago we had to drop a few trees so unfortunately a couple did go into our pond um, so we'd really like to get this cleared as you can see the house back there we have a little clearing but we definitely want to take down more trees we'd actually like to take down this whole side over here to kind of open it completely up to be able to see the pasture the pond, everything cleared. As far as the woods and everything that we have back here, we're okay right now leaving it woods. Eventually, ideally what I'd really love in is my uh, homestead lifetime goal, is I would love to have our whole property fenced in. Um, that way when it comes to moving our cows to pasture to pasture, from one side of the um, driveway to the other, um, that if one decides to not go the way it's supposed to, that if it does get out and it meanders around, whichever, that no matter what, it's all gonna be enclosed in. So if an animal does get out, we don't have a chance that it's gonna you know, run to the other county. So um, looks like the dogs wanna come up here. So I'll go ahead and show you this little path that we have up here as well. This is also where we'll take our Horses if we just want to take a quick little loop, but it goes up and around. And then we have a trail that goes way down in there too. So yeah, this is all of our property here. There's a clearing as you can see on top of that hill. That is where our property line goes to. All right, guys, so thank you so much for coming along with me this morning, showing you all the animals that we have. Did get a little off track with uh, giving you guys a little sneak peek of the garden we have going on and all the work we have towards that. So um, for all the garden junkies out there like myself, our last frost is the end of May. So hopefully beginning of May in the next three to four weeks we're going to get the weed fabric pulled get that tilled up pretty good and I need to start thinking about what exactly I want to put in my garden as I had mentioned in another video I really want to be more intentional with what I put in my garden this year oh that sun is bright but nice this morning this week is going to be beautiful it's going to be uh, most days in the 70s. I cannot wait. But the mornings are still pretty chilly. All right, you guys. So we are going to go ahead and end it here. Horses. 
again, thank you so much for hanging out with me this morning. Um, I look forward to spending the summer with you, getting this property back to its prime. Springtime is not always the prettiest, but um, when it comes to the trees not being in bloom yet, but before we know it, it'll be fully green and beautiful again. So I hope you guys have a great day and talk to you soon.